Brenda Evers was born on December 16, 1963, in the heart of Ennett, Oklahoma. She grew up in a devout Christian family, surrounded by their love and warmth, plenty of family dinners, and the fellowship of prayer groups. She was known to most for her quiet demeanor, her passion for baton twirling, and her helpful nature within the community. It would be the norm to find Brenda at the church volunteering, but all the way up, quite prim and proper. Brenda's life took a turn when she met Rob Andrews through his younger brother who attended school with her. Their romance ignited and they dated throughout her high school years, even though Rob was already away at college. She graduated and started college closer to home, but pretty soon Brenda's love for Rob would motivate her to transfer and follow him to Oklahoma State University. Their love blossomed and the young couple married in 1984 making the move to Oklahoma City to pursue Rob's career in advertising. But the winds of fate soon blew them to Texas, where Rob's career prospects beckoned. Brenda adapted seamlessly, finding her place in their new community. So much so that when Rob again accepted a job back in Oklahoma City, he found himself returning there alone. In the end, after several months of separation, Brenda would again follow her husband and seemingly settle into their new life. In December of 1990, the couple had their first child, a daughter. Four years later, a son would follow. With the arrival of their children, Tricity and Parker, Brenda and Rob's life to the naked eye had to appear picture perfect. But beneath the surface, cracks began to form. Brenda's quiet demeanor shatters, revealing the woman desperate for escape. Her vulnerability became prey to temptation. Not knowing what else to do, Rob confides in their pastor and close friends, revealing Brenda's descent into infidelity and verbal abuse. The timid girl from Enoch had transformed into a woman consumed by desires and deceit. It began with Brenda having an affair with the husband of a co-worker and friend. Of course, when things like this happen, so does the gossip meal. But it is Brenda's brazen flirtation with a grocery store employee that unveils a darker side to her infidelity. In a very calculated move, she slides the key to a hotel room to the shop clerk, thus beginning a very sordid two-year affair. But the depths of Brenda's deception knows no bounds. Soon enough, she will go as far as to involve a lover in criminal activities, blurring the lines between passion and exploitation. It was at North Point Baptist Church that Brenda and James Pavitt were absolute cross. The insurance salesman served alongside a Rob as a deacon, and the two would become friendly. Unfortunately, both James and Brenda were Sunday school teachers as well. And it wasn't too long before their friendship quickly turned into a passionate affair. As Brenda's infidelity spiraled out of control, so did her plans for Rob. James, cunning and manipulative, sold Rob an insurance policy for $800,000, which of course named Brenda as the sole beneficiary a move that would seal Rob's fate in a tragic scheme of greed and betrayal. Brenda and James hatched a sinister plan for her husband, but their attempt to sabotage his car by cutting his brakes failed. Lucky for Rob, he quickly discovered the mechanical issue and switched cars. Later that day, he received an anonymous frantic call informing him that Brenda had been in an accident he needed to get to the hospital as quickly as possible, only for him to rush there and find that that was a lie. 
planned or just a random series of events. It all seemed just too coincidental. He filed the police report, voicing his fear and suspicions of foul play at the hands of his still wife, Brenda, and James Pavitt. Nonetheless, the two were still determined to be rid of the Rob problem. On November 25th, 2001, Rob arrives to pick up his children. It was the Thanksgiving break, and he had long since moved out of what was once his family's home. He had no clue of the danger awaiting him. In a cleverly planned attack, he was lured into the garage, where he was shot and killed by James Pavin. Once the police descend upon a home, they are met with a questionable and violent scene. Brenda recounts a harem and tale of mass assailants, claiming that they ambushed her and Rob in the garage, leaving Rob for dead and her wounded. Thankfully, it is the discovery in a neighbor's attic that raises more questions. Inside the residence, forensic evidence tells a compelling story. Shotgun shells and 22 caliber bullets paint a damning picture especially since the vacation residents had left their keys with Brenda. The cops believe this points to possible insider involvement. As more of Brenda's story emerged, scrutiny intensifies. Her superficial wound, inconsistent with her account, raises suspicions of foul play. Moreover, a startling revelation from a handwriting expert implicates James Pavin in forging Rob's signature on an insurance policy. With each revelation, the truth inches closer to the surface, exposing the tangled threads of lies and manipulation woven by those entangled in a web of deceit. But as the investigation deepens, one question remains. Who will be held accountable for the ultimate betrayal? In a tense interrogation room, lead detective Roland Garrett presses Brenda's for answers. As she faces questioning, her demeanor remains stoic, showing no signs of remorse upon learning of Rob's death. With each denial, she attempts to shield herself from the mounting accusations. Brenda vehemently denies any extramarital affairs, insisting that James Pavitt was merely a close friend. She paints a picture of Rob as a paranoid figure consumed by his own suspicions. When pressed about her feelings towards her husband, Brenda's response is chilling. She confesses to both loving and hating him. Despite repeated questioning, Brenda adamantly denies any intimate involvement with James Pavitt, refusing to waver, even when directly confronted with the accusations. As Brenda's interrogation unfolds, one thing becomes clear. Amidst the web of lies and deception, the truth remains elusive, leaving detectives to shift through the tangled threads of betrayal and deceit. It seemed there were empty seats at the funeral for Rob Andrews. Neither the estranged grieving widow nor his children he loved so much were in attendance. With Rob's children in tow, they fled to Mexico, seeking refuge from the consequences of their actions. It would be the adult daughter of James Pavitt, Jana Lawson, who would prove to be a pivotal witness in the trial of both her father and Brenda Andrews. On the stand, she bravely recounted the events. My father had me help prepare them to leave the country. He said they were going to flee ahead of charges, charges that they knew would condemn them both. I couldn't stand idly by, knowing the truth. She goes on to recall being forced to forge documents, including a letter granting Brenda permission to leave the country with the children. Jana found herself being entangled more and more into this web of deceit. And despite her initial belief in their innocence, Jenna's conscience compelled her to assist the FBI while they were on the run. 
Rob's family deserved closure, even if it meant betraying those I once trusted. I began working with the FBI, hoping they would apprehend James and Brenda before it was too late and they vanished into the shadows forever. Between them, James and Brenda made countless calls, often requesting money to fund their escape. They treated Jana as though she was their lifeline. Little did they know, the cell phone they called had been provided by the FBI to facilitate communication. But it was Jana's chilling revelation that sent shockwave report. My father told me it was Brenda who had asked him to kill Rob Andrews. In the end, Jana's bravery and cooperation were instrumental in bringing James and Brenda to justice. With their funds depleted, and their options exhausted, James and Brenda made the fateful decision to return to the United States, where justice awaited them. In a dramatic courtroom showdown, Brenda and James were convicted of first-degree murder and conspiracy. Despite Brenda's protest of innocence, she was sentenced to death, becoming the only woman on Oklahoma's death row. Today, Brenda sits in a Mayville Bass Correctional Facility, while James Pavitt resides in the Oklahoma State Penitentiary. The memory of Rob Andrews lives on in the hearts of those who loved him. His children went on to live and were raised by his parents. Their story serves as a chilling reminder of the consequences of greed and betrayal, leaving behind a legacy of pain and loss for all involved.